Okay, so once you open up Rough Animator, um, you can then either draw your lettering in Rough Animator using the brush tool over here, or you can do what I've done and import it from wherever you want. So you can import your um, pictures by going to Project Options, and then Import Image, and then choosing wherever it is that you've saved it. Um, I've just done this quickly in Procreate because I think the brushes are a bit better in the app than they are in this one. They don't tend to do exactly what you want, so a little bit temperamental brushes in Rafanamisa. Um, okay, so we've got our layers at the top here. Uh, background is obviously white. Um, I've got my hay lettering sitting on this layer one here. Uh, and these little boxes here, the blue rectangle, the white rectangle, the green rectangle, they're essentially frames. So as my animation gets longer, they will, will get more and more of those stretching over to the right hand side. Um, so it's the same as like in um, After Effects or something when you've got a little tiny box for a frame and you can put what you want in that frame. Um, over here you've got the brushes, the um, eraser, select, forwards and backwards. Uh, and then this is play down here, so you can watch your animation. Obviously it's not doing anything right now because I've only got one frame. Um, and this down here will just go to the next frame or you can click up here and it'll do the same thing. Um, the onion skin is quite a handy thing to have. So it basically means that you can see the next, the next layer and the previous layer um, in like a half opacity so that you can see where you're going. It's quite handy to have on so I will tick that on if I was you. Um, okay so essentially we're going to be working backwards with this animation because what I've got here drawn is um, the fully animated in lettering so like the finished product, the final frame. So we're going to be working backwards and just taking away from that so just going to duplicate the layer to start with and use my eraser tool. So I want to keep this hay as the final layer always. So I'm going to be working on the layer, the first layer really. Um, so if you think about how you want this to animate, um, I was thinking of doing it as like almost how it's been drawn in. So if I was, if I was drawing this right in hay, then the very last bit I'd write is probably the end of the Y. So that's where I'm going to start and I'm just going to erase a little bit off the end there and try and keep the end still quite nice and rounded so it's not like a clean slice off the end um, but just a bit more of like a maybe that's where the pen is finished. And as you can see underneath that grey bit that's what the onion skin is doing so the grey bit is what's on my final frame and the black bit is what's on my current frame. So if we do that again, go add drawing, duplicate after, but remember to go back to the first frame because that's the one we want to be editing. So again, just take a little bit more off the end of that Y. And again, you can see what the next frame is and what the next frame is after that. Um, okay, I'm just going to speed this bit up a bit whilst I do some more erasing. Here I'm going to split the Y into two bits, so instead of it animating in just how I'd write it, so going down for the first bit the Y and then up and then down again, I want it to animate in just a little bit quicker, so I'm going to make that first bit stop there and join up whilst the other downstroke is coming down, if that makes sense. And the same with the E here. I'm just going to cut the E off now so that the animation doesn't get too boring and nothing's happening. So that we've always got stuff moving and it doesn't get too static. Um, you can do as many frames as you want. Obviously the more frames that you do, um, the smoother the animation will be and it will be like less um, jumpy. So once I've done this I'll probably go back in and um, just like add frames in between the frames that I've got already so that it's a little bit smoother. 
and I'm just going to start erasing from the bottom of the H as well. I think this is probably the first line that I'm going to, that would be drawn in, but it's also quite long, so I'm going to start this one before the next one because it's a little bit straighter. So here on the E, I'm just going to be a bit careful about where that line goes because I want that line to still be quite smooth. Um, yeah, everything else is just going to come up a little bit more. So I'm just taking a little bit more off each time. Just doing the same process over and over again. It does get a little boring, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to play this quickly. It's going to be pretty rough, but that's generally okay. <laughs> I'm just going to add some frames at the end, if I can, um, just so that it pauses a little bit at the end rather than looping right round. Okay, um, so now I'm going to add some little lines um, which I've done on the on the original. If you skip back to this, the beginning of the video, um, you can see the finish um, animation. It's just got some little lines around next to the letters when when the line kind of comes around a big curve or a big corner there's just a little line that kind of moves along next to I guess where the pencil would be or whatever's drawing this lettering um kind of following it round just gives it a little bit of character and like adds to the movement I guess um so I'm just going to show you how I've done those so if we take this um the curve on the top of the H here I'm just going to, so we've got the full curve here, so I kind of want it a little bit further back maybe, because I want this line to kind of follow where the animation's going. So I'm just going to draw a quick line around here, okay, um, and then I, as it progresses, I'm just going to have to So when when you import your um, when you import your image, try and make it have a transparent background, <laughs> not like what I've done. So oh, I've done a white background here, which is fine, but it just means that every time I try and use the onion skin on a bit of image that's not <laughs> that's just white, it means I can't use it because there's stupid white background in the way. Um, so do that. Uh, but what was so here, I want this line to follow the curvature of where this animation is going. So because it's drawing in from like left to right, kind of clockwise around this bend, as the line is kind of coming away from that, I'm going to start removing it from the left-hand side as though it's kind of moving with the animation. So we're going from that to that. And the next one, just going to have to erase it again. The next one's going to start around there-ish. I've done this really badly. Um, and then the next one again, just getting a little bit smaller. And smaller again until it kind of disappears. Whoops. So you can make it as small as you want, but... It's quite nice if it just sort of fizzles out towards the end. So yeah, it's just, so it starts there, but I'm gonna do a little bit of work before it as well, so that it builds in rather than just like flashes in. So there, it kind of moves like organically with the line. So now I'm just gonna do the bit before it as well. So this time I'm gonna start in the same place but I'm going to finish the line a bit early so starting here and I'm going to finish like whoops there-ish
and just keeping it like nice and light. I'm trying to. The brushes are not great, so good luck. That might be a bit long. And I kind of wanted it to move with the actual animation, so I've done it a bit badly here, but it should be kind of coming in like there rather than where I've done it, but hey. Um, so yeah, let's just have a look at that. So it sort of follows it through quite nicely. Um, and then I'm going to add them to a few more places as well. So let's just think if I've got one, one here-ish, I'm probably going to add one like here, maybe here, maybe there. Maybe not actually. <laughs> Probably here because that's quite a long boring curve. Maybe there. I'm not sure. But I'll do that later. Um, okay, so just wanted to show you that line. And then the last thing I'm going to do on here is. So the end of that Y, it just kind of stops quite suddenly. So just to carry on a little bit of movement there, I thought it'd be nice if the Y kind of carried on and went like, woo! <laughs> um, so I just want like a little blob basically. Are we on the last frame? No. So if I go from the last animated bit here, if I just draw on like a little dot, so then we're going from here and it's like a little bit's kind of broken free and I just want that dot to like keep moving so maybe it's here now and then it's going to bump into the Y like that now it's been swallowed by the Y <laughs> Um, but then it can kind of come out the other side. Just, I just want to keep that little bit going a bit, I guess. So, yeah, I'll do it later, and you can see in the final version. But yeah, that's um, pretty much the basics of Rough Animator. It does take a while, but I think it's kind of nicer than doing it in like After Effects and stuff, where it's just like a computer does it. <laughs> At least on here it's, you can kind of say that you've drawn every frame and it's exactly how you want it to be. I find with After Effects sometimes I can't make it do exactly what I want it to do and it gets a bit annoying. <laughs> so this is a handy alternative. It's like making your own flipbook, but digital. So yeah, have fun with it.